hello students so we are uh, discussing device shielding and we have realized that due to the presence of a test charge in the plasma charge separation will be created and as a result we will get to see an effective potential which we call as phi and so del square phi is e times n e minus n i divided by epsilon naught. So, it is very important to understand the origin of this potential or the role of this potential in shielding the electric field, right. So, of course, there is a test charge, there is a potential and there is an electric field. What is the potential? This potential has arised because of the unequal number of electrons and ions in this cloud. Right. So, within that cloud, you have more electrons. Right. So, this negative charge, more most of the negative charge has given rise to this potential. Now, ideally, if this potential is visible for the entire plasma, then there is no shielding. Right. So, our expression that we are going to derive should be able to give us an inference that this potential will cease to exist after a point of time. After a certain distance, this will cease to exist. Only then, we can establish the idea of shielding of the electric field by the plasma. So, whatever it is, so one thing is uh, as of now, even before we discuss the device length or derive the device length. So, plasma is behaving collectively. So, all the plasma is behaving collectively to shield out the electric field. Right? Now, let us take it ahead. So, we have to derive what is the form of phi. Okay. So, ideally we take the coordinates r theta phi. Right. So, we need to have r theta phi. So, what does it mean? It means we have to find out how the potential will vary as a distance as a function of distance away from the test charge and how it vary in the angular direction and in the azimuthal direction right so we have a three dimensional picture and we have something like this right so we have to find out with respect to r theta and phi so basically the, the laplacian can be expanded in r theta and phi then we can use the right hand side right now at this point of time, what is the role of temperature? Because if there is no temperature, then the electrons movement will be restricted. Right? They do not have any thermal motions, right? which means that given the temperatures, the number density of electrons will be something. It will follow some distributions. Right? So, we can assume the Maxwellian distribution where the number n is n infinity exponential minus E by kBT. I think all of you are familiar with this distribution. This will just tell you at any given temperature how many number of electrons you can find with respect to the background number of electrons, right. So, you can so you can use it to write the function f u which is a exponential minus half m u square plus E phi divided by k b t. You see this, this is the kinetic energy. Electron has its kinetic energy by the by the virtue of its temperature, fine. Now, this additional energy E phi, when you are accelerating a charged particle with a potential V, the energy that it gains is E V. We know this, right. So, I have used the same E phi. I am calling the potential as phi instead of v, right. Now, there is uh, a positive charge, just a quick recap. Now, there is a cloud of electrons around this positive charge. Within this cloud, the number of electrons is greater than number of ions, which creates a potential and electron obviously sees this potential. So, electron sees this potential and gets an energy E phi. So, this is the full picture, right. I, these are the ingredients that we have 
in this particular recipe. So, we if we want to understand what happens in totality, we should account each of these. We cannot neglect any of these and find out an expression, right. So, we can say that since the number of ions is constant, it is not moving, they are not moving. So, we will say that number of ions is equal to number of uh, an equilibrium number which is not changing, but the number of electrons on the other hand is n infinity e to the power of minus e, all of e plus by k bit. This is what we have, right. So, this e is kinetic energy plus e phi. Now, what we have to do is, let us say the kinetic energy is there, of course, when phi is 0, how will you find the number of electrons? Number of electrons, since we have written the distribution function, the number of electrons can be minus infinity to infinity f of u du, right. So, at equilibrium, when phi is 0, we have the condition which is the number of ions is equal to number of electrons. We are calling going to call this number as the n infinity, right. So, number of electrons as a function of r, let us say, will be n infinity exponential minus e phi by k v t minus e by k v t, okay. Here, let us say we do not we do not talk about the background kinetic energy, we are rather more interested about the role or the influence of the potential phi, okay. And, okay. So, since charge is negative, we will write number of electrons as I am using E, the charge of electron as minus E. So, I will write K B so, this is a very important relation. The meaning of this relation has a lot of significance in plasma physics, okay. Now, let us use these things and try to derive an expression for the uh, device potential. Now, we have del square phi is equals to E times N E minus N I. So, for we are good, right. We accounted for the charge density first, then we accounted the electric field that can be produced out of that charge density. We wrote the electric field as the negative potential gradient. Now, we have a potential phi. See, the potential will tell you, the, the expression for the potential, if it is written in all the coordinates, will tell you where is it strongest and where is it weakest. So, now we have to see how this del square phi can be expanded in the r theta phi coordinate system. So, del square phi, this is standard, you can refer to any book on simple vector calculus, you can, you will find this expression readily available. So, del square phi is 1 by r square dou by dou r of r square dou phi by dou r plus 1 by r square sin theta dou by dou theta of sin theta dou phi by dou phi by dou theta plus 1 by r square sin square theta times dou square phi by dou phi square. This is the expression for del square phi. So, do not do not think how I got this expression. This is pretty standard Laplacian in the spherical polar coordinate system. So, ideally, n, when n i is equal to n e, our potential simply becomes 0. This is the initial condition, right. We are deviating away from it, right. Let us assume the potential phi is symmetric 
in theta and phi directions. Theta and phi directions, it is symmetric. What does it mean? So, it is not varying with respect to theta and phi, that is it. So, it is only varying as a function of distance, but along the uh, azimuth, it is not varying, it is constant, right. So, which means that we can neglect dou by dou theta terms and dou by dou small phi terms, they are 0. Since we are no longer dealing with 3 independent variables and 1 dependent variable, we have only 1 independent variable and 1 dependent variable. That means, we can get rid of all the partial derivatives and we can write the total derivative, right. So, we will write, so now all of this is del square phi. So, we have gotten rid of these terms. So, this, this is irrelevant, this is irrelevant and this one. So, we are only left with this. These are zeros by the way, right. So, now we can write it as 1 by r square d by dr of r square d phi by dr is equal to e by epsilon naught. Now, we missed an epsilon naught when we got this expression. Del square phi is, yeah, I forgot to write an epsilon naught here. Sorry for that. So, this is e by epsilon naught. N e, we know N e is N infinity exponential e phi by k v t minus n infinity. You see, you have a positive term which appears in the exponential which says that at higher energies you will have, that means you have more number of electrons at a given temperature. Generally, the distribution is opposite, right. But it is indeed true as long as you consider this plasma system uh, within this cloud, of course, this is valid, right? That is the beauty of this expression that you see here, right? Now, we can, uh, all this is not required. 1 by r square d by dr of r square d phi by dr is equal to e by epsilon naught n infinity exponentially e phi by kt minus n infinity. Right. So, I will just rearrange the terms for convenience. So, some algebra which is essential for thorough understanding of the physics d phi by dr is E n infinity by epsilon naught times exponential E phi by k b t. What is k b? k b is the Boltzmann's constant. Okay, fine. Now, let us say we impose a condition now that E phi is much, much less than k b t. Why do I need this condition? I want to write the first order approximation of this exponential. Then I have to have the condition that the power that appears in the exponential is small, so I can use it. So, I will write it again 1 by r square d by dr of r square d phi by dr is equal to e n infinity by epsilon naught times 1 plus e phi by k b t minus 1. I have written exponential as 1 plus x because x square on all those terms will become very small as the numerator is very small in comparison to the denominator. So, only this term, this term will also be very small, but we cannot just write it as 1, that is it, right. So, we have this because we have we need to have the variation the exponential is representing something so maybe the smallest variation that it represents we have to account for it okay fine so here is the same thing 1 by r square d by dr of 
r square d phi by d r is equals to e square n infinity phi by epsilon naught k b t right the phi the potential is a result of charge separation the majority charges that are there inside this sphere or the electron cloud is obviously electrons and the entire approximation is valid for electrons so it's appropriate to write the temperature as electron temperature so obviously this this is the electrons which are trying to see this potential and get accelerated or get some energy right so now let us say we will make some substitution right so we, we have a second order differential equation right so phi is the independent variable here and all of this obviously is a constant which is multiplying it you see this isn't it let us say we call this constant if you see what will be the dimension of this okay we can derive the dimension of this you will realize that it will be something like 1 by length square we define we just make some substitution that is it lambda d square is epsilon naught kb t e divided by e square n infinity. So, what is lambda d? Lambda d is in the units of length. So, epsilon naught k b t e by e square n infinity is in the units of uh, what do you say square root of length. So, using this I am just substituting this using this we can write the equation as 1 by r square d by dr of r square d phi by dr is equals to phi lambda d raised to the power of minus 2. So, this is a differential equation of course and the solution of this differential equation what is the solution of this differential equation? Solution is phi we have still not obtained the form of the device potential. We only know if there is a radial variation in the device potential, what will it represent? That is what this equation is telling you, nothing more. Okay. We still have not derived what is, what is the form for phi. How this potential has originated? This potential has originated by the introduction of a test charge, a positive test charge into the plasma, right. Let us say we take it ahead and we let us see what we can do about it. So, this is still the same 1 by r square d by dr of r square d phi by dr is I am going to call phi as phi of r. Why? Why? Because phi only varies as a function of r, but with respect to the other two coordinates, it is constant. I take this derivative inside, okay. I will keep 1 by r square outside. You have d by dr of uv. Taking the derivative inside, we have 2r d phi by dr plus r square d square phi by dr square which is equals to phi of r divided by lambda d square. Taking the 1 by r square also inside we have 2 by r d phi by dr plus d square phi by dr square is equals to phi of r divided by lambda d square right. So, 2 by r d phi by dr plus d square phi by dr square 
is so we will conveniently write it as d phi by dr plus d phi by dr plus r d square phi by dr square is equals to r phi of r divided by lambda d square. This is 2 d phi by dr, right? Once r is taken to the other side, 2 d phi by dr. So, we have written phi of r plus d phi by dr plus d phi by dr. So, these two we are going to write it as it will remain d phi by dr, 1 d phi by dr will remain plus d by dr of r d phi by dr is equals to r phi of r by lambda d square. You understand? So, this is u v again. If I take this derivative inside, it will be once it will be d square phi by dr square plus you take the uh, it, you, you keep it as v then dr by dr is 1. Right? So, this is still the same just rewritten it. We can take d by dr as common and we will write d by dr of r phi is r phi of r by lambda d square. So, all of this is written like this. You just try to match, you will find out that both of them are same. Okay. You first take d by dr of this, this is uv, then you take a derivative on that, you will get back this. Maybe you can try it yourself and match both sides. Okay. Now, essentially all of this, now I can rewrite it as d square by dr square of r phi minus r phi of r by lambda d square is 0. You go back and see d square by dr square of r phi minus all of this is equal to 0, right. Let now at this point let r phi is equal to x by changing the variables. Now, we can write our equation as because we have r phi. So, if you see what I have done actually, I have just started from this equation which is 1 by r square d by dr of r square d phi by dr is equal to phi times lambda d raised to the power of minus 2. So, instead of all this, I rearrange the terms so that this factor r times phi appears on both the sides of the equation. That is what I have right now. So, and then I am going to call r phi as x. In that case, I will write the equation as d square x by d r square. Now, here it is very important to note that x is not length. Okay. It is, of course, it is, uh, it is r times the potential. Potential, if you take q by 4 pi epsilon naught r, just the basic form, the, the actual form of potential is what actually we are trying to understand or we are trying to derive. But the dimension, the point is r phi is not, di is not distance, d square x by dr square minus x by lambda d square is equal to 0. Okay. So, this equation is okay for you to accept, right. It is not something very complicated. We followed all the first principles of derivatives or differentiation and arrived at this second order differential equation. Fine. Now, we have to solve it. We the, Our job is still not done by deriving this equation, but let us try to understand the inference of this equation so that we in the next lecture we can solve it and we can obtain the analytical form of phi of r. Where is this phi of r residing? It is residing inside this electron cloud. What about it? It is created because of this unequal number of charges inside this or majority of electrons inside this 
and it so happens that this potential or the limit of this potential is only up to a particular distance and beyond that distance this positive test charge or its presence cannot be felt. Okay, so, we will conclude this lecture here and in the next lecture we will try to solve this equation and obtain an analytical form for the device potential and also establish how the potential diminishes at the length at the characteristic length which we call as the device length. Okay.